What is going on, Serpent Squad? Tanner here, and I'm coming at you with another terrarium update. Today, we're going to be taking the three year look at none other than the closed tropical terrarium from How To Terrarium Episode 2. This is going to be a somewhat drawn out introduction. If you don't want to see any of that and you want to jump straight ahead to the terrarium update, I'll link it up right here and down in the pinned comment. But for those of you who want to stick around, I got something that I want to say. What I have here is a really cool terrarium. It's not my best work, it's not my favorite, but it will always have a really special spot with me because this terrarium single-handedly jump-started my channel and allowed me to get to where I am today. That was back in 2016. However, the Serper Design channel actually goes back to 2013 and I had been on YouTube since the advent of the platform, but before that point, meaning 2016, I'd never been consistent with YouTube. I always knew that I wanted to do something with this platform, I just didn't have my voice, I didn't have my direction, and the success of this terrarium video really just gave me an outlet, it gave me a way to express my creativity, show my art, show the things that I love, because I always wanted to do something with nature, animals, art, all the things that I show on this channel, but I just never really knew how, what am I going to do? Am I just going to be an artist to paint some picture? I really didn't know, but these types of art forms to me, they are the pinnacle because nature, that's the best artwork there is and we're really just capturing the essence of it in ways that people can enjoy they can reconnect to nature and it's it's so much bigger than just making a terrarium or making a vivarium there's so much to it and I really just see how much bigger these things are than myself as I continue to work through them and again YouTube is a vehicle in which I can share all of these things with you so it too holds a special spot with me just like this terrarium obviously it has its challenges it's things that we're all trying to work through with it but it really has been good to me I've had so many great opportunities and things happen to me because because of it so it too along with this terrarium has been a huge blessing to me and I just want to thank you all so much for your continued support I mean I can't believe the scale that this channel is now and where it's going I only continue to see growth and I just I have so many big plans and things that I had been talking about in the beginning that really are only now starting to come to fruition I thought things were gonna happen so quickly when I first started but that's what happens when you have a big vision things happen slowly and slowly but I'm working through all of it and I know that a lot of you guys think that I'm kind of changing or getting away from what I once was. Truth is, I'm just getting more comfortable behind the camera. I'm ex experimenting with different editing techniques and stuff like that. So my vision has continually been the same throughout the entire time. I'm the same guy I was in the beginning as I am now. So again, I just thank you guys so much. And all things considered, this is an extremely special terrarium for me. So why don't we go ahead and take the three year look at the closed tropical terrarium from How To Terrarium Episode 2. Here it is three years later. As you can tell, everything's grown in extremely well, especially that oak leaf creeping fig. It's grown all over everything and it really needs maintained. So we'll get in here in a moment and trim things up. The moss has grown in really well. It's all over the place. That too, we're probably gonna have to trim. I think we'll just trim it shorter and then all the trimmings we'll just put back in the substrate to keep it going. And then as you can see, the Anubius too is doing really well. It's grown a little bit bigger. It's not too much bigger. It shouldn't get much bigger than that. But check out that root system coming down in the false bottom. And if I actually show you the underside, there's just roots everywhere. So it's really cool. And just overall, I'm really liking how this looks. Oh yeah, I just saw some, so I almost forgot about them. The springtails. Springtails are still doing good. I haven't opened this terrarium since last year whenever we did maintenance. So again, it's doing really good. I get a lot of questions of people saying, how often should I open it? How often should I water it? All that sort of thing. Honestly, you only need to water it or do anything like that if you do maintenance. And you don't even have to do maintenance, but I like to do it because I like to keep all of my plants trimmed, keep it looking how I want it to look because I view this as more of an art form than just I'm married to the idea of a terrarium. I know a lot of people are married to the idea of just setting up an ecosystem and letting it thrive and all that sort of thing. Although that is an aspect of it that I find fascinating, I'm more interested in the art form about it. So if I have to do a little bit of maintenance or something like that, I prefer that actually. I like to be hands-on with it, but the hands-off nature of a terrarium is also kind of nice because I can neglect them for a little bit and I know that they're still gonna do fine. We got a preliminary look at everything and as you can tell, it's looking good. But in order to know how it's really doing, we gotta give it a smell. 
It's one of those times that I really wish we had smell of vision because this thing smells great. It smells just like the forest. It looks and smells good and those are both telltale signs of a healthy and thriving ecosystem. But as you can see, it's overgrown. So why don't we go ahead and get out the terrarium toolbox and give it a trim. We don't need much for this one. I'll just get my curved scissors, my curved tweezers, and we'll get some alcohol pads as well, or just one should be fine. And I'll also get my little copper tool here. keep these alcohol pads on hand so that I can sterilize my tools before using them from setup to setup. This is something that I normally don't show, but I figured it was worth showing since I put out the toolbox. My do is I just wipe off any surfaces that will be used. I don't really care as much about these, but whenever you're cutting the plants, it helps to have a really nice, clean tool. We'll also do the tweezers as well, just the tips here and copper as well. We'll just do the ends. Again, I don't really care about as much about the spots where I'm holding it, mainly just where it's coming in contact with this. Let these air dry for a second and then we'll get in here. Before I get in here and start trimming, I just wanna move around with my tweezers and just get a sense of what is going on. Just to see how all of this is trailing, what I wanna trim. So once it's trimmed, it's trimmed. Obviously it will grow back, but if you don't have to trim something, then why would you want to? Okay, so for sure, this one I want trimmed. I'm gonna get it right there. Pull the cutting out. And this one, I wanna trim all the way back to there about this one and yeah, this one too it's getting a little out of hand just like that already looking better i also don't really care for how this one is growing so let's right there pull it out good on this side, the ficus is growing in so densely that it's actually starting to shade out all of the undergrowth and kill it. So what we wanna do is really just trim off some of this bulk up here that's really not needed. So you see this one here, prime culprit right there. We kinda of work this back. Mm. I don't like how this one is shading out the Anubius. You can tell it's getting kind of yellow because it wasn't getting enough light. I also want to thin it out a little bit down here because I can tell that it's just way too thick. The plants are choking each other out. This is one of the things I always talk about why I like to do maintenance. Left unattended, these plants will just outcompete each other. The strongest will survive. And obviously that's what happens in nature. But in this type of environment, if you want to keep a certain aesthetic, if you want certain plants to do well, it really helps to just do, take a few moments to do something like this. It makes all the difference. I also want to go around and trim the moss. If you see all of the stuff that's up against the glass here, it's actually growing up the glass. I don't care if a little bit of it is tall, but I want to cut it maybe in half or so, just so it's not growing up that much. Snip it like that. And after I snip it, I literally just get my tweezers here and press it down over top of the substrate. Like so. Since we've had this open for a little bit, we've lost some of the moisture and humidity. So what I'm gonna do is I got my sprayer here and I'm just gonna spray a little bit of dechlorinated tap water in here. Literally, I'm just gonna add one, two, 
three spritzes those were to the glass and I'll do one two three four five to in here so it wasn't very much and again you don't need to be watering these unless you open them to do maintenance or if the lid isn't airtight and water's escaping but in this type of scenario you really don't need much another reason that i like to do maintenance on terrariums is that the inside of the glass can get kind of dirty you may have noticed that as we were going through this but it will get covered in moss spores and stuff like that that can obstruct light from coming into the container and thus hindering or stopping the growth of the plants altogether. So you really want to keep it clean both on the outside and inside. So cleaning dust off the outside as well is a good idea. So what I have is a microfiber cloth. And I'm just going to wipe the inside of this out. This is one of the reasons why I sprayed the glass down with water. It helps me to get rid of all this stuff. Loosens it up because it can get kind of crusty on there. So if you spray it down ahead of time, it can really help you get it nice and clean. And this one is open enough that I can do it all by hand. Sometimes I'll cut off a section of the microfiber and use my tweezers to do it. But this one is open enough that I can just do it all by hand. And here it is, nice and clean. Looks much better than it did previously. Everything's trimmed, glass is clean and it's looking crisp. Before I go and seal up the container, I also wanna clean off the lid here and replace the gasket. So as you can see, it's all dry rot and just split in half. So definitely check that over time. I bought this container at a thrift store originally, so who knows how old it was before I got my hands on it and it was already kind of dry rotten at that point. We've got a replacement that we'll put on here in a second. So like before, just spray this out with a little bit of water. Get the microfiber cloth and clean it out. All right, so we're clean, looking good. Let's get this gasket on here. Stretch it out. Much better. And with that, we're finally ready to close it back up for another year. As you can see, we got a lot of nice trimmings of oak leaf creeping fig from the deal. So what I'm gonna do is add these into my propagation bin and then we'll take a look at the terrarium. And there you have it, the three year update on the closed tropical terrarium from How To Terrarium Episode 2. If you want to see the video in which I initially set this up, I'll link it up here and down in the video description. It's packed with loads of good and relevant information that can definitely help you get started on making a closed terrarium. That said, my delivery wasn't as strong back then and I personally can't watch it as I find it a little bit cringy, but if you're new to terrariums, it's a great place to start, so I do recommend it. And I think I'll end it there, Serpa Squad. As always, thank you so much for watching and your continued support. If you wanna see more terrarium content like this, you wanna see the future update on the How To Terrarium series and more nature-related projects, be sure to stay tuned and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.